characters are what drive our stories. Think about your favorite novel or television show. Is it the story that pulled you in or was it a specific character? I tend to enjoy a lot of both of these, but I know from experience that no matter how interesting the storyline, it is always a character that really sucks me into the story. And if there are no interesting characters, well, I don't last very long and I will probably never read or watch it again. The best way to make your characters fully developed and feel genuine is to make them people. Give them desires and faults and eccentricities. But also make sure that these don't just manifest as details on a page. Your characters have to live and breathe these characteristics. You don't just want to show what your character looks like or his favorite pastime. You want to show the reader how those traits affect your character. How it transforms the way they think and the way they see the world. For example, I have a character who is a scaredy cat. When a spider crosses Rodney's path, he doesn't just see it as a nuisance or even just a spider. What he sees is an evil creature lying in wait, lulling him into a false sense of security before it attacks. When other kids see a swimming pool, he sees a bath of transmittable fungus and disease. Every place he goes and everything he sees is filtered through his ever-present fears. In the television show Numbers, mathematician Charlie Epps sees every problem and the whole world as different mathematical equations. Putting yourself into your character's head can be the best thing that happens to your novel, especially if you're writing in the first person. It not only helps you understand how they see the world, but to more realistically understand their reactions and motivations in different scenarios. Once I realized that Rodney saw the spider as a terrifying adversary, I knew exactly what he was going to do when he encountered it. If you're interested, he ran far, far away. Avoid telling the reader what your character is like. Let your reader see your character talking and doing things. This piece of wisdom from Sol Stein lines up with that long-touted number one rule of writing. Show, don't tell. We'll be talking about this in more detail in the coming weeks, but essentially it means that you don't write, Bernie was so fat it was difficult for him to fit through the door. You write, Bernie wobbled sideways to squeeze his bulk through the doorway. To characterize means to describe the distinctive nature or features of, or to distinguish. You can do this with dialogue, mannerisms, or how your character wears their clothing. There was a piece of advice I heard a while back that I honestly can't remember where I heard it, but essentially it was, don't describe to me a normal neighborhood street. When you tell me that there is a neighborhood street, I see a neighborhood street. What you want to do is tell me what's different about this street. This is kind of the same idea. You don't just want to mention that your character is wearing a red dress with a slit up to the hip. Show your reader how this woman is wearing the red dress, and it will tell you something about her character. If she's trying to hold the slit together or trying to sink into the fabric, it shows us that she's uncomfortable or nervous. But if she's making sure that her long leg is always exposed through the slit, it tells us she's confident, possibly seductive, without ever spelling it out for the reader. Make sure that your characters grow through their experiences. It doesn't have to be an extreme change, but chances are a lot of things happen to your character in your story, whether physical, psychological, emotional, for good or ill. And each one of these changes is going to affect your character. If her boyfriend was killed, your character might start wearing his favorite color all the time in memoriam, or she might avoid it at all costs because the memory is too painful. Every change we go through affects us. In Half Moon Investigations by Owen Colfer, young wannabe P.I. Fletcher Moon manages to solve a big mystery, but in the process, he hurts somebody that he cares about, and he considers giving up mysteries altogether. In Of Giants and Ice by Shelby Bach, Chase Turnleaf bonds with a new set of friends on their adventure, and it affects his personality. This, I think, is a prime example because Chase's personality doesn't change drastically. He's still basically the same person he was before, he just shifts a bit in a particular direction. So, what happens to your character? If you need some help on finding the best way to develop your character through the events of your story, there is an excellent interview with author Shelby Bach on this very topic that I consider a must-read, and that's linked down below.
Also, Ukami Kasumi on DeviantArt has several excellent articles on writing, including the character arc, which is also linked below. It's important to keep all of your characterizations of characters and things in the point of view of your character. So if the character that is telling the story is a hardened 28-year-old boxing champ, he probably wouldn't say that his mother cuddled the chihuahua like a favorite teddy bear. That kind of description would be more in tune with a child. So if your character is an 11-year-old girl, that could work perfectly. Up next, we'll be talking about points of view and making sure that you're using the right one consistently. So don't miss out on that.